Oh, jeez, I was, I was just having a really bad, spooky nightmare that there was no news. But strap the heck in, because there is news, and we're about to talk about it. Microsoft is putting Google Plus for consumers out of its misery following a security breach. Plus, details on the Philly Trans March last weekend. Also, the world is slowly ending, it's our fault, and we probably can't fix it. Really? Yeah. Damn. Also, there's some other news. From WHIP, I'm Tony Pearson, and this is your WHIP Weekly News Crackdown. Social media network Google Plus announced on Monday that they would shut down following the exposure of a years-long data breach due to a software bug. The bug allowed third-party app developers access to the personal data of hundreds of thousands of Google Plus users. According to the Wall Street Journal, the first to report on the breach, Google did not know about the bug until this past March. The bug allowed outside parties to access details such as name, email address, birthday, and work history. Google stated that although up to 500,000 users could have potentially been affected, they are unsure if any app developers were even aware of the bug, let alone abusing it. Google delayed notifying users about the bug because they did not want the company brought into the same media spotlight as Facebook's 80 million profile breach earlier this year. Additionally, Google did not think that the issue was serious enough to disclose. The company did not break any federal laws by not informing users of the breach, although a lot of people aren't happy about it. Google Plus, launched in 2011, never came close to competing with the social media giant Facebook. On average, 90% of Google Plus users were on the platform for less than five seconds at a time. Instead of trying to rescue the social media network, Google has simply decided to shut it down for consumers. Rest in peace. Speaking of rest in peace, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued a report on Monday claiming the planet will reach the crucial threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius increased as early as 2030. This increases the risks of severe drought, wildfires, floods, and food shortages for millions of people worldwide. This is bad news, folks. This latest forecast is based upon our current levels of greenhouse gas emissions, according to CNN. The temperature increase is already nearly two-thirds of the way there, as the planet has already warmed about one degree Celsius. Andrew King, a lecturer in climate science at the University of Melbourne, described some of the disasters we can expect as we exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming. These include more heat waves, hotter summers, greater sea level rises, and for many parts of the world, worse droughts and rainfall extremes. These issues are expected to be severe enough and on a wide enough scale to threaten global societal stability more than they already do. In other words, if you think the migrant crisis is bad now, you have seen nothing yet. In order to cap the increase, we would have to limit our global carbon dioxide emissions by 45% from 2010 levels and reach a net zero by 2050. Even this will not prevent the 1.5 degrees Celsius increase, but it will stop it from increasing to even worse measures, the likes of which could threaten modern society as a whole. While this is technically possible, it will require an unprecedented change in energy industries, buildings, transportation, and cities. King closed his statement by stating, quote, the window on keeping global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius is closing rapidly, and the current emissions pledges made by signatories to the Paris Agreement do not add up to us achieving that goal, end quote. We are well on our way to a global catastrophe. As this story was written, the U.S. East Coast was actually hit by a hurricane just shy of Category 5 strength, one of the top four strongest hurricanes in U.S. history. This was the second massive hurricane to hit the U.S. East Coast in under a month. On a totally different note, on Saturday, October 6th, Philadelphia held its eighth annual Philly Trans March at Love Park. People of all gender identities, expressions, and experiences were welcome to rally and march together. Christian Lovehall, a black trans man and activist from South Philly who created the march, 
said his goal from the start has been to create a voice for marginalized communities. They walked in remembrance and solidarity of loved ones and community members who have faced hate, social injustice, and inequality, specifically calling attention to the unsolved murders of Stacey Blonick and Shanti Tucker. Other issues on the agenda were the lack of resources for trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming youth, as well as elders. To celebrate Mural Arts Month, Mural Arts Philadelphia has partnered with Lyft, a ride-sharing company, to provide mobile murals. On Thursday, October 11th, four flatbed trucks depicting eight murals will be driving throughout the city. Philadelphians have a chance to take photos with the trucks around 10 a.m. and 3.30 p.m when they stop outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Lyft is encouraging its passengers to visit Philly's art scene by providing the code ARTPHL for a 25% discount on rides to select locations, including the Art Museum. The code is valid Monday through Friday from 5 p.m. to midnight. Throughout the month, there will also be four Lyft vehicles depicting Ben Volta's Bloom and Yuri Jones and David McShane's Water Gives Life. A 25% discount comes along with the ride if you are picked up by one of these cars. And that's all we have time for today. Tune in at this time next week for more of the news you care about. From WHIP, I'm Tony Pearson, and this has been your WHIP Weekly News Crackdown.